Hi, my name is Angie Redman. I'm going to show you how to work through the definition of the integral as the Riemann sum definition. So the limit of the summation. We're going to go through all of the steps. I strongly encourage that you first print my video notes so you've got the formulas and you can follow along. Maybe grab an extra blank piece of paper or two. Let's go ahead and get started. This is what my video notes look like. So if you've got this printed, or even if you don't, that's okay. I wanna quickly go over what's here. So we've got the Riemann sum definition. This is what we're gonna be working through. We're also gonna need these summation formulas in order to simplify the summation before we can take that limit. I wanna break down this definition really quickly for you here. This counter right here, this is the sum of the areas of the rectangles. And we've got N rectangles, but we're gonna let N run to infinity. So we're really looking at the area under a curve. Let me see if I can draw a decent curve. There we go. But we're gonna take infinitely many of these rectangles to fill in the entire area. And as you notice here, we've got f of x sub i star. This is the function value at a sample point. This is our height. And we have delta x. Delta x is the difference in the x direction, which is the width of each rectangle. So we're really just summing, really just. We are just summing infinitely many rectangles to come up with this area. The summation formulas, that's gonna let us break down the summation so we can take the limit. I'll go through those as we get there. Here's our example. We're gonna go ahead and calculate this definite integral. So I'm looking for the area under this curve from x equals one to four. So we could say that we're on the interval one comma four of our function. And you'll notice that the notation from above in the integral notation is replaced with the function value, which is gonna be the height. And instead of delta x, we've got dx, which also represents the width. Okay, so let's jump in. We're gonna calculate this integral using the limit definition. So we're gonna start with figuring out what our delta x is. So delta x is the width which is gonna be my interval width, B minus A, divided by the number of rectangles. B in this case, oh, let me put my limits of integration up there. We're going from one to four. So A is equal to one and B is equal to four. So as I do that calculation, it's four minus one divided by N, also known as three over N. So we can replace that delta X with a three over N. We also need to figure out x sub i star. This is my sample point, x sub i star. For the definition, we're gonna use right hand rectangles, which means that we're gonna start at the beginning of our interval and then add the widths to get to each value. So we wanna go ahead and take a, and we're gonna add our delta x, i times. We added the first time to get to the first endpoint, two times to the second endpoint, and so on. If I put that in terms of what we've got in this particular problem, a is 1. Delta x, we just figured that out. That one is 3 over n, and then we've got our i. We're going to go ahead and plug both of these into our summation. So that's going to go there into the function itself. And 3 over n is going to replace delta x. Let me go back to my blue pen so we can go ahead and continue to work through this definition. I'm going to leave the limit. We're going to calculate the limit at the very end. The summation i is 1 to n. And then next I want my f of x sub i. That is going to be up here at my function 3 times my sample point squared minus my sample point plus two. And then outside of that, I want my delta x. Delta x is three over n. Let's go ahead and plug that sample point in. Our sample point is one plus three over n times i. I'm gonna go ahead and put the i up there with a three. One plus three i over n. In. Let's continue to simplify. My goal is going to be to do the summation after I've simplified everything and second, last, to do that limit. I've got room enough just to do one more step here. 
Let's go ahead and expand some of what we've got. So the limit as n goes to infinity of the summation, i equals 1 to n. And as I multiply this out, let's go ahead and square this first. I'm going to very carefully FOIL that. So I get 1 plus, uh, let's see, 2 times the 3i over n. So that's going to be 6i over n plus the 3i over n squared, so 9i squared over n squared. Minus, let's distribute that negative, so minus 1 minus 3i over n plus 2 times the 3 over n. Let me go ahead and grab this and put it on a blank sheet and we'll continue. I'm going to simplify inside by distributing that 3. Let's also combine the negative 1 and the 2. I'm still going to drag along that limit with us and goes to infinity. And then our summation, i equals 1 to n. Now let's distribute 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times that 6i is going to be 18i all over n. 3 times the 9 is 27i squared over n squared. I'm going to um, combine the 1 and the 2. So negative 1 plus 2 is plus 1. And then the minus 3i over n. And then I still have that 3n on the outside that I need to distribute. Um, continuing to simplify, I can combine the 3 and the 1. I can also combine the 18i over n and the negative 3i over n. So let's go ahead and do those. Limit as n goes to infinity, my handwriting gets more messy the longer I go here. i equals 1 to n. OK, so that 3 plus 1 becomes 4. 18i minus 3i becomes 15i over n plus 27i squared over n squared. I think I've got everybody. And now I can distribute the 3n inside. I'm almost ready to take some summations. So the limit as n goes to infinity. i equals 1 to n. Let's distribute that 3n into our square brackets. So we get 12 over n plus 3 times 15 is 45, i over n squared, plus 27 times 3 is 81, i squared over n cubed. Next, I'm going to distribute the summation. So I need to take the sum of each of the terms that I've got inside of those square brackets. So let's go ahead and bring that summation through the square brackets. I still have the limit. So this is equal to the limit as n goes to infinity. But now bringing that summation through, I get the first summation, i equals 1 to n of 12 over n, plus the next summation, again, i equals 1 to n of 45 i over n squared, oops, over n squared, plus the last summation, i equals 1 to n of 81, i squared over n cubed. Now for this, only something that has an i is a variable in terms of the summation. I can bring everything else out in front of the summation, which is going to put me in the position where I can apply the summation formulas that we saw at the very beginning. So we are getting close. Continuing to bring this limit along with us. So n goes to infinity. Um, nothing in the first summation depends on i. So I can actually bring that on the outside, or you can leave it. I'm going to bring it on the outside i equals 1 to n. If I divide that out, I get a 1. That's going to become n. The sum of n ones is equal to n. So we can see the summation going away there. For the next one, I can bring out the 45. That's a 4. So I can bring out the 45 over n squared. And then I have the sum of the i's here. Again, that's i equals 1 to n. And then finally, I can bring out the 81 over the n cubed. And inside that summation, I have the i squared. So I've got myself in a position where I can apply a summation formula here, here, 
and here. Let's go ahead and move over to the next page so we can apply each of those. Okay, here come our formulas. We're gonna replace this summation with the formula, this second summation with the formula, and this third summation with the formula from the very first page that we saw on the video notes. Um, that is going to give us, let's see, so I still have the limit on the outside. So the limit, which we're almost ready to apply, so I'll write it a little more neatly. I've got 12 over n. If I add up one n times, that becomes n. There's the first summation. Okay, for the second one, that's a 45. So 4, 5 over n squared. The formula for the sum of the i's, the sum of the consecutive numbers, is n times n plus 1 all over 2. So that gives me the second formula. And then finally, 81 over n cubed times the sum of i squared. That one I don't truly have memorized. It's n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all divided by 6. Okay, still have a little bit of simplifying to do, but you'll notice now that everything is in terms of n, and we can start to think about taking that limit. Let's simplify. n goes to infinity. These n's here cancel. Um, I can also cancel 1n with the n there. And as I'm simplifying here, let's also expand this. So this becomes n squared plus n. And I'm ready to do a FOIL there. So that one's gone with just a single n. And these are gone. OK, so what do I have left inside the brackets? I've got 12 plus. I have the 45 over 2. So let's write that as 45 over 2. If I multiply that through to the n plus 1, I've got 45 over 2 times n plus 45 over 2. That was a 2n, right? 2n plus a 45 over 2n. So in that first group, the n's cancel. So I'm going to hang on to the 45 over n. In the second group, I've got an n in the denominator, infinity in the denominator. This one's going to go to 0. So I can actually cross that one off. OK, let's do the next one. So I'm going to again grab what I've got here. And that gives me my 81 over 6n cubed. And I'm going to do this FOIL here. So that's going to be n, uh, let's see, no, 2n cubed plus, I'm going to get n squared plus a 2n squared, so that's 3n squared. And then on the end, I get plus n. OK, so where am I? I am getting so close. I'm actually taking the limit where I can as I go. So I have a 12. I have a 45 over 2. Um, that takes care of the first few terms. Let's go ahead and distribute this through now. So that's going to give me 81 times 2n cubed over 6n cubed. The next one plus 81 times 3n squared over 6n cubed. And then the last one, all of that times n, 81 over 6n cubed times n. I'm going to tackle the last ones first, because as I cancel these, I end up with an n squared in the denominator. That goes to um, 0, so anything divided by infinity. As n goes to infinity, the next um, fraction back, I can cancel the n's here. I'm left with an n in the denominator. Infinity in the denominator also goes to 0. So it's going to be this one. I can cross off the n cubes. I can cancel the 6. 6 is 2 times 3, so that cancels with the 2. And that 81 becomes 27. OK, take a look at what I've got. Nothing left in terms of n, which means I'm done with the limits. Let me go ahead and write what I've got now in black. I've got 12 plus 45 over 2 plus 27. To add those, let's put those all in terms of halves. So that's going to be 24 over 2 plus 45 over 2 plus 54 over 2. So I add these two together, I end up with 99. 
99 plus 24, 99 plus 24 is 123 over 2. And that is the answer that we are looking for. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you've got any questions. Go ahead and drop those down below. Thank you so much for watching.